Hello and welcome back to Photoshop Elements Imaging Techniques and Tips. I'm your host Ken Keith. Big shout out to the local folks as well as those of you who are so kind to join us on Vimeo and on YouTube. Well you know there's a lot of ways to create backgrounds for your images whether they be landscapes or portraits or maybe product shots that sort of thing and there's just a lot of ways to go into Photoshop Elements, there's the content when you go to create, go to the content tab and pull up your different backgrounds and uh, some of those are really great and, and work good but uh, the drawback being that uh, everybody else sees those and uses them out of their version of Photoshop Elements also. And of course then you can create different colored backgrounds, uh, go out to new blank file overlay colors, do the, all that kind of stuff. But I think what's most fun is to create backgrounds from your own images that will be completely unique to uh, you yourself. So let's get to that right away, how we're going to accomplish that. All right. This is a photograph that I call Art Support. It's a performing arts center that's being built in downtown Kansas City and it's got a lot of color because the image has been solarized. Now I'm going to just uh, turn this into a vertical because the uh, this is going to be the background and uh, the image that's going to be on top of that is also in the portrait orientation rather than landscape. So I'm just going to go up to my image rotate and 90 degree left and now here is the part in which you create your own unique background from your own picture it's very simple just go now to filter blur Gaussian blur and uh, you can play around with this but generally you want a, a pretty uh, high number here in in the pixels for the radius of course you can play around with it uh, and get uh, a lot of different uh, unique looks but we're going to set it up pretty high and click OK and then go right back to filter blur and this time motion blur and once again you see I have this distance cranked up all the way and certainly you want to uh, mess around with that but generally speaking uh, unless you want details to show through you want a pretty high amount and sometimes it's just easier just to crank it up all the way and then with your cursor uh, click and you can move around the uh, angulation of this image uh, so that um, th that's unique so, so you just see that you have a, a whole lot of different things that you can do with this oh, I'm going to accept that um, I think uh, uh, somewhere around this point and um, pull this up just a little bit I know there's so many different things I'm going to click OK there you can play around with this stuff all day <laughs> it's crazy anyway uh, once you get your background uh, layer going here you're going to want to make a layer mask and we can't do that the same way in Photoshop Elements as we do in the big Photoshop programs. So what we have to do is so what some people call hijacking a mask. So we want to create this mask and we're just going to go uh, depending on uh, whether you're, uh, if you're using Photoshop Elements 8 your adjustment layer icon is here and the previous uh, elements versions there up above. So just click on this icon, pick anything, anything from the drop down. I'm just going to click levels. And what we're after here is not a levels adjustment, although you could make one if you wanted to, but the important thing here is this layer mask. And this is the only way we can get a layer mask in elements. Alright, now once we have that, I'm going to take my uh, main photo and I've already opened it up here in the photo bin and I'm just going to click and drag it right on top of the background layer 
and um, it's a, a bit larger as you see than the than the background so I'm going to resize it a bit now you notice that uh, I can see part of my handles in the bounding box here but I can't see them all so uh, I've mentioned this before but just to reiterate if you can't see your ex outside handles just control zero and now you can see them all and I have to resize it here again but um, the important thing was seeing my handles because I, I did want to see uh, this entire image something like that all right oops we want it quite that big. It's a little hard to, hard for all of us to see that one. All right, now we can see that a little bit better. Okay, so we have this uh, image overlaid upon the background. Of course, we can't see the background. So what we're going to do then is work on this mask. And in order for uh, that to work properly, we're going to highlight this top image layer now, and press Control and G and that creates a, a clipping layer or a clip, clipping group and uh, that's important you can also access it from the menus but the keyboard shortcut is control G All right. then highlight the layer that has the mask and and click right on the mask there click on it set your foreground to black and then just grab your brush in darken mode and by default it's going to show a 100% opacity but what I'm going to do is I want uh, the background layer to show through but not at that intensity so I'm going to lower it as a starting point here to about 40% and then just begin painting, painting on this mask If I go back over it, the areas that I've re previously painted, well, we're, we're actually going to bring out a little more color, which is what I intended here, because uh, at 39% uh, it wasn't quite what I was looking for. And uh, I might even bump it up just a bit more. There's some blank void areas in here. I'm going to go around here. Now, I didn't want uh, in the final image that the tip of the calla lily to be overlaid by color from the the background. So uh, if you make that kind of mistake, or let's say you get some around here that you don't want, then reset your foreground to white. Go up here to your mode, to lighten mode, and I'm going to bring this up to 100% opacity be because I want 100% of the calla lily or the this original image to come through. I don't want any bleed over from the background layer. I'm using my bracket keys as I'm painting here to reduce the size of the brush to match the background. It's pretty thin up here. We've got that accomplished enlarge it a bit bring this color back to the original image down in this area and there you have it so you see this has virtually unlimited potential uh, what I like about these backgrounds is not only the fact that they are from my image and images and unique to me that they give me a, the feeling of uh, what uh, in, in canvas backgrounds when we buy them a lot of times they're painting what they call old masters and so many of these things look like old masters to me and it saves me a lot of money from buying expensive canvas backgrounds so experiment around with this uh, give me a holler uh, either, either comment here 
our, with our introductory video has contact information if you like this video and like this technique or your experience with it. Have a great week ahead and we'll talk again. Take care.